Welcome to That's the Word, wholesome tales for the whole family. I'm Father James Yamauchi. Today's story, Desperate Measures. Oh, did you hear about? Inwardly, Francesca sighed. Where two or more are gathered, there is gossip. Francesca did not like engaging in gossip. She knew it was wrong, but she could not very well tell other people what to do. After all, this was not even her parlor. The ladies would chat about this one thing and then would move on. When Francesca saw an opening, she could help direct the conversation in a different direction. The chatter rattled on. The women were very engrossed in this topic. Francesca tried to be polite by acting like she was listening. The women were getting very excited. In spite of herself, Francesca started taking interest. When slap! Francesca's head whipped to the side. The conversation stopped abruptly as the women stared at her face. Very clearly, on Francesca's cheek, there was a large red mark as if someone had just slapped her. That was because someone had indeed just slapped her. Her companion that day also knew that the gossip was wrong, but unlike Francesca, he was going to do something about it. He was disturbed that she would entertain any sort of idle conversation like this. So, he took matters into his own hands, literally. There was no more idle conversation after that. It was definitely the most physical that Francesca's companion had ever been. But he had been with her for a very long time. After her son had died, she grieved greatly. She knew it was in God's hands and that his will would be done. But, as any mother can imagine, her sorrow was still very great. Then one night her son appeared to her. He told her to be strong, because sadly she was about to lose another child. However, he did introduce her to a companion. From that point on, this companion was visible to Francesca though not to anyone else. She would have this companion for the rest of her life, visible to her, but invisible to anyone else. It was him that slapped her that day when she did nothing about the gossip that was happening in her presence. And it was him who guided her through the rest of her life and helped her stay the course. Francesca truly received a special gift when she was granted the ability to see her companion who was present throughout her life. We all have such a companion at our side, but they are typically not visible to us. For after the deaths of two of her children, God granted St. Francis of Rome the gift to see her lifelong companion who is there to light and guard, to rule and guide a companion that all of us have, each and every moment of our lives, our guardian angel. And for this week, that's the word. So, John Peter and I want to make very clear as we talk about this story that if you are not a guardian angel, then we should never slap people. That's not the way to handle things. Guardian angels do their own thing. We have ways to be able to allow people to repent and grow and become the saints that God created them to be. But, you know, it's fascinating. I mean, angels are different beings than us. I always love talking about angels. Whenever I go to a parish, I always uh, find a way to give a homily. I call the angle on angels because a lot of people don't know about the angels. Um, You even hear the term dating back to, you know, Hollywood and stuff that, you know, we become angels one day or the angels get his wings from It's a Wonderful Life. But they are separate beings. We will never be angels. Angels will never be human beings. 
And the guardian angels are actually from the ninth choir of angels. And each choir of angel has their different responsibilities. The top three really focus on, on serving God. The next three, that next tier, so to speak, focus on uh, the governance of the universe as servants of God. And then the last three choirs of angels are focused on um, serving God by handling the things that are on this earth. And so it's it's just fascinating. There's so many things to get into, but I think it's just important to recognize that they are created by God. They are immaterial beings, so they are pure spirits. And as human beings, we are body and soul. But we both have a common destiny, which is to be forever with God one day in heaven. And the guardian angels, as we said at the end of the story, are there to light and guard and to rule and guide so that one day we can get to heaven through this valley of tears on this side of life. Fun fact about St. Francis of Rome is that she is the patron saint of automobile drivers. The reason why she is a patron saint of automobile drivers is because her guardian angel would light the road before her with a lantern when she traveled. Hmm. I guess automobile drivers is a better patronage than headlights. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Before we recorded, we said, why is she the patron saint of automobile drivers? I thought the um, the fact that she is from Rome, she's St. Francis of Rome, and I was in Rome for six years. Let me tell you, I don't know how they drive there. They drive. And so they, they definitely, I think she just stays busy in Rome because uh, um, I always remember something that was once shared with me when I got there in Rome. This is how laws work in life. In America, everything is permitted except what is prohibited. In Germany, everything is prohibited except what is permitted. In the communist country, everything is prohibited, including what is permitted. And in Italy, everything is permitted, especially that which is prohibited. And it seems like traffic lights and street lanes are kind of suggestions in Italy. And it's just fascinating to see how things work. Somehow it does work. And I think that's thanks to, in part, St. Francis of Rome, and a bunch of probably nervous guardian angels. If you enjoy That's the Word, please share the word. You can see the story extras for this story, Desperate Measures, at sonsofthunderrock.com, where you can see a picture of St. Francis of Rome, and we'll also try to find her baptismal font, a picture of that which is also in Rome. Sons of Thunder Rock is also where you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and where you can find our social links and our email if you have any feedback or story ideas. Thanks for listening and join us next Wednesday for another enlightening and wholesome tale for the whole family.